Hello, my name is Annie Yuraski with the Division on Deaf, Deaf, Blind, and Hard of Hearing. We're here today to announce that November 18th, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, MDHHS, um, issued an order to do with the COVID-19 epidemic. We're going to be checking in today with Dr. Michael McKee from the University of Michigan Department of Family Medicine. We're gonna talk a little bit about some important things in the order. I'll ask a few questions and Dr. McKee, thank you so much for joining us today and answering for us. First, why should Michigan residents be concerned about the skyrocketing numbers of COVID cases here in the state? Thank you for allowing me to join today. It's good to see you again. You're right, yeah, we're really concerned about these numbers. We're hearing a lot of information um, about COVID-19 and the numbers spreading quite quickly. The numbers of cases um, mean how many individuals have tested positive for COVID-19. The numbers have increased rapidly. And unfortunately here in Michigan, we've seen that especially. Unfortunately, each individual that becomes sick can spread that, and we see it happening mostly to two or three different individuals. I know that people are tired of COVID, um, tired of the restrictions, so um, they've you know, maybe dropped the social distancing, wearing the mask, washing their hands, thinking maybe it's not important. They're tired of following these guidelines and hearing the reminders but it's really, this is the worst that it's been so far right now in Michigan. Compared to March, the number of cases we have now are quite a bit higher. We're expecting that uh, during fall and winter, those numbers are going to increase even more. That's unfortunate that that's happening right now. Thank you. Now, under the MDHHS order, what kind of indoor gatherings, so houses, public places, what kind of activities are being restricted for the next three weeks? The order from the governor uh, in the state of Michigan, MDHHS, um, is requesting that we, we put these limitations in place so that we can mitigate the spread of COVID-19. There's limitations on certain activities like indoor sporting events, some gatherings, there's re restrictions in place that are of course going to affect Thanksgiving. I know people are ready for the holidays and wanting to gather, but there are some limitations to how you can gather with family and friends because the more you get together, the more you increase the risk of spreading more COVID cases. Right now, they're limiting it to two different households And, and asking that maybe you consider um, a virtual Thanksgiving, maybe meeting via Zoom rather than in person. And really, virtual Thanksgiving is going to, it's gonna help you protect the, the older population like parents and grandparents. So that's really the strong recommendation from us to help keep people safe. We know you wanna gather, you wanna have a good time, but right now it's time to consider protecting your loved ones. So we recommend um, isolating to one household. Uh, if you have to get together with, with another group, um, maybe just one other household, definitely not three or four. The more people you get together, the more you increase that risk of exposure. So we encourage you to, to consider and really remember that COVID-19 is spread through the air and also from, from surfaces. So when people cough, it can easily be spread to somebody else and they can easily become sick. Uh, then if you touch a different surface, that virus can still be alive there for up to two days. So both of those ways are, are ways that the COVID-19 numbers could increase rapidly. Thank you. Also, under the order, there is a specific timeline of three weeks for these restrictions to social gatherings. Why is three weeks that important timeline? 
Sure, if you look at the list of recommendations, you can see some very specific things listed. So those indoor gatherings they'd like you to avoid or at least follow the restrictions. And the reason three weeks is listed is, is say a person is exposed, it tends to take on average two to five days for that person to then become sick, but it can take up to 14 days. So, it, but again, on average, it's two to five days. And so then if that person becomes sick, they might not know for a while that they're a carrier. So three weeks allows us some time because if at maximum it takes 14 days for symptoms to develop on somebody, it's a safe window of time for individuals to know if they've been exposed, if they're sick, if they need to quarantine themselves. This allows time for testing and we do encourage all people of course, to socially distance to try to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Three weeks is a good rule of thumb. It's a good rule to follow, and I really commend that decision. We're trying to not overwhelm the hospitals and the clinics and the healthcare workers themselves. Thank you. Now, why is MDHHS stressing the importance of only gathering um, if you're outside. They're really stressing that if you do decide that you need to get together indoors, um, maybe keep it to, to one or two households only. Right, gathering outdoors is more safe. Uh, the virus sort of blows away with the wind easier than it would indoors. In the, air, in the indoors, you're breathing that same air over and over, and that definitely increases the amount of virus that can be in the air and how it can be spread. So the, the risk is much higher if you gather indoors. It's also harder to stay six feet apart, especially if, if everyone is in one room. And you, you can gather in the house, but outdoors is going to be safer. The air is constantly moving. It's being ventilated much easier, which lowers the risk a little bit. So we encourage people to, of course, socially distance at least six feet. And if you're gathering with other people, wear a mask. If you're, if you have to meet someone, if you have to go into someone's house, or if you need to go to the doctor or go to any place else where there's going to be other people, please wear a mask. It's imperative that you do. And of course, the rule right now is that if you do gather, it's up to two households. But it's even better if you separate and keep your house to, you know, only meet with people in your household. And then if you want to meet with others, connect virtually via maybe Zoom or some sort of other video technology. That's the better, more safe way to meet. Thank you. Now, I think it's important to, to remind everybody that these face masks are still required. Yes, absolutely. Those masks are required indoors. Is that what you mean, indoors? Well, I guess, I don't know. I mean, it, just in general, how are they required? Sure, the masks themselves are strongly recommended um, to be used whether you're outdoors or indoors. Now, if you're outside and you're not near anybody, it's fine. Of course, you can take your mask off. But if you're outside and you're gathering with other people, maybe you're going for a walk and you're passing other people, wearing a mask is still a great idea. If you're indoors, of course, please, you must wear a mask. You must have it on at all times. And right now, masks are the best protection we have. I know people are looking forward to there being a vaccine. Hopefully that is coming soon. But in the meantime, masks are the strongest protection we have against the spread of this virus. You have to remember that wearing a mask, um, if you're wearing a washable, reusable mask, they should be washed every day. If it's cotton, if it's some material that you can wash, please wash it every day. If it's a one-time use mask, make sure you're only using it that one time and then disposing of it. But please, yes, always have your mask on. That's a really great reminder. You're right, I think that's important. I want you to elaborate a little bit on why the order included some more restrictions for indoor gatherings. Um, why is that risk level different? 
Yeah, again, when you're gathering indoors with people, um, the risk is higher. The more people, especially, uh, if they're sharing one room, they're sharing the same air, uh, especially if it's cold, we tend to keep our windows closed. So there's no breeze, there's no good ventilation, there's no way of cleaning the air. And if there's an, an air conditioning unit running, that increases the risk too, because it's moving that same air around. So indoor is always gonna be a higher risk than gathering outdoors. It's all about how much air is circulating. It's definitely a concern for people indoors. So, which means anytime you go indoors, wear a mask. It's not 100% effective. It's not going to protect you completely, but it's something to consider. It's one way that you can help reduce that risk. Uh, and if you know there's gonna be a significant number of people there, it's a good idea that you sit this one out. Now we know the holidays are coming up. The order specifically recommends um, what we should do or what we should consider around the holidays, specifically when it comes to social gatherings, what that should look like and what rules we should follow. I know it's important to stay in touch with your family and your close friends. And of course, if you can meet outside, that does increase the safety. But, if, but it's cold too. If you can, go to a park, take a walk, stay six feet apart. You can have some contact that way. Also consider when you're gathering to share a meal around the holidays. If you can be outside, maybe light a bonfire, it'll help keep you warm, but also reduce that risk of spreading the, the virus. Keep it small, that's the recommendation. Definitely keep it to a small group. Don't invite a bunch of people to get together. But we still encourage you to think about this holiday season very, very carefully. Consider your plans carefully. Consider setting up a virtual holiday rather than an in-person gathering. Those decisions are going to help us keep the COVID numbers down and help us keep our holidays more safe. We don't want people to get together for the holidays with their family members and their close friends and then end up with someone very sick having to go to the hospital or maybe even passing away. So we need to consider that option too. I think another good reminder are some of the best practices when it comes to different COVID protocols. What do we need to know to make sure that we're, that we're doing every day? Again, wear a mask. Wash your hands as often as possible. Anything you, anytime you touch something, wash your hands. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Then if you touch those areas, it does make it easier to spread things. Uh, socially distance, at least six feet apart. Avoid any sort of close contact with other people. The more distance you keep, the lower the risk is of breathing in that same air and possibly spreading a virus. Because if someone were to cough, or sneeze, or even talk loudly. Um, and really, anytime you're just simply breathing, you're spreading that virus, or you very well could be. So it's important to practice social distancing as well. Suppose I suspect that maybe I have COVID. Uh, maybe I'm showing symptoms, or I know that I've been exposed to someone else who told me that they tested positive for COVID. What should I do? Sure, if you find out that a friend or someone that you were with recently uh, tested positive for COVID, it's important that you contact your doctor and ask them what your next step should be. COVID isn't always present with symptoms or rather symptoms aren't always present with COVID. Um, but if you do have symptoms, it could be a sore throat, a cough, a fever, loss of smell or taste. Those are just some examples of what you might notice. So if you know you've been exposed, monitor yourself for those symptoms. You don't necessarily have to get tested, but it is important to contact your doctor to ask their advice. And of course, isolate yourself. Quarantine yourself for 14 days, just to make sure you're safe um, and you don't spread that potential virus onto other people. 
And if you think you do have COVID, again, contact your doctor. They have some treatments available to help um, reduce the symptoms or reduce the severity and even prevent death. So please contact your doctor, talk to them about your situation, your health concerns, and then your doctor can give you an idea of what to watch for. Uh, if you really do become sick or you struggle to breathe, you have any sort of respiratory distress, go straight to the emergency room. Where should I go if I need to get tested or if I need some resources um, about COVID-19 testing? It depends on your symptoms, um, whether you're symptomatic or whether you're not. You can contact your regular doctor and uh, he or she can give you a list of different places you can go. Uh, the state of Michigan also has a website that you can look up uh, some online resources or local testing sites. It'll show you what testing sites are close by. But you want to make sure and make uh, that you check and make sure that it's a, a qualified testing site because there's some limited resources right now. But always feel free to contact your doctor. That's probably the most important. Contact your doctor's office. See what their recommendation is. They might know where the local testing sites are as well and let you know if you should go get the nasal swab test. Sometimes if you go into a hospital building, um, they used to have a drive-through, but I know now that it's cold, there's fewer drive-through testing sites available. Uh, but there's also some indoor testing facilities available as well. Thank you so much, Dr. McKee. We really appreciate your input. Are there any closing remarks you'd like to share? Really, I just wanna stress that now is the time to consider different ways that you can protect yourself and ways that you can protect your loved ones. I know we're all tired. We're all frustrated. We're all ready to go back to normal life. The more we follow these guidelines, the more we follow the mask mandate, washing our hands, social distancing, the, help or, or the better it's going to be for us to overcome COVID-19 in the long run. Hopefully the vaccine will be available soon as well, but right now we need your help mitigating the spread. We want to reduce the numbers of COVID-19 as quickly as possible. And that means all of your efforts during the holidays are important. It's important to follow those health guidelines. I also wanna add, absolutely, I agree with you. This is an important time. We are definitely all frustrated and tired. It's been tough. It's been a really tough time for all of us, but it's important that we follow the MDHHS order. We would really like to mitigate the spread and lower the number of positive cases of COVID-19. And the way we do that is by doing our part to protect ourselves and other people. Thank you so much. Please stay safe. Oh, absolutely. Thank you too.